Great and Stakes Racing continues in 2020, and this time we go to the Bayou, New Orleans, for the Grade 2 New Orleans Classic. It's a nine-horse field, including a couple of millionaires and a horse that participated in the 2019 Kentucky Derby. Let's start at the rail and Lone Sailor. Yes, the classic closer. He finally got up in his most recent race and picked up a victory. He's now three wins, seven seconds in 24 lifetime starts. And he's done it the hard way, getting a million dollars, picking up a lot of second and third place checks in some big stakes races. But he did get the win by a neck in his last time out at Oaklawn Park. Now he goes back to the graded stakes races. And a horse like this is always going to be pace compromised. We'll see if he can get a little bit of pace up front to help that closing kick of Lone Sailor. Sonneteer is another horse who's done his best running from behind, but three races back, he was a little bit closer to the pace in a distance race and ended up drawing off and winning by seven lengths at Churchill Downs. He does have a big victory at Oaklawn Park last year, but now at the fairgrounds, this will be his first start. And this six-year-old by Calumet Farm does have a habit of kind of coming in the money at big prices, one to take a look at if you're looking for a long shot here to probably close, especially with a wide open tote board. The horse with the most fastest Brisnet speed figure, a 107 with only two lifetime starts is Fearless. And he's out of post position number three, I read Ortiz Rides and this $725,000 Keeneland September yearling purchase by Go Sapper put it all together in a second lifetime start. Picked up the big eight length win. That was after a maiden breaker. He's now a four year old. He is a gelding and he's two for two as he comes in to the New Orleans handicap. Chess Chief is a long shot by Into Mischief. Always going to question him getting the distance, but he is a hard-knocking veteran. Two wins, three seconds, and 15 lifetime starts. Miguel Mena is in the saddle of Chess Chief. Tenfold drops in class from a Grade 1 Pacific uh, Pegasus World Cup Invitational. And he also kind of picked up his most recent win, but that was getting way down there in his past performances at the Pimlico Special. He took advantage of a speed duel that day, and since then he's been out of the money on five different occasions at four different racetracks. Lifetime, he's just four for 16. Key factor to note, no second place finishes. It seems to be all or nothing for Tenfold, as he is the second millionaire in the field. Big question for Tenfold is he does get a major jockey switch, John Velasquez rides him in Saturday's race. Silver Dust, he's picked up back-to-back -back victories and now six wins, seven seconds in 26 lifetime starts. He's also three wins and three seconds in eight starts at the fairgrounds. Enters in career best form. His last two speed figures are a 95 and a 94 on the Brisnet scale. And Silver Dust uh, did have a little bit of a controversial win a couple of back. Uh, too much uh, banned medication, so that win was actually uh, taken away from him. We'll see what Silver Dust can do with Brian Hernandez riding this Saturday. A long shot with a chance is Captivating Moon. They have done well with Captivating Moon going from turf to dirt, and that's an angle that Chris Block likes to use every once in a while. Last year he went turf to dirt and almost pulled off an upset uh, at the fairgrounds. His record, two starts, one win, and I like the fact that two back, he had kind of a rough trip, closed late on the turf. Then he was only a couple lengths out the last time with Silver Dust and Gunnett. There wasn't a lot of pace pressure that day, and the track was very front running. I think Captivating Moon is worth uh, taking a look at as a long shot in this race. By my standards, he'll be one of the favorites. Big victory in his most recent race. That was his first race since the Kentucky Derby last May. He was uh, actually bet down a little bit, 18 to 1 in the Kentucky Derby. Of course, won by Maximum Security, who was disqualified, and Country House was placed first. By my standards, never really got running that day. He did upset at 22 to 1 in the Louisiana Derby last year. He likes the track, five starts, three wins at the fairgrounds. And this compact horse, he's kind of built like a sprinter. But uh, Golden Sense is the sire, and he's by Into Mischief. I really like his comeback win, a 97 Brisnet speed figure. He won by six lengths, and he's going to take a lot of money. The question is now, can he go up in class and face older horses? Uh, although a horse like Fearless only has two lifetime starts, Lone Sailor is a closer, and by my standards, 
probably about three to one or seven to two odds in a race like the New Orleans Classic. Rounding out the field, post position number nine is Gunnett. He has lost to Silver Dust in back-to-back -back races. Can he turn the tables? Well, his best chance would be if Silver Dust gets a little bit more pace pressure, and he may get that from Fearless, but I think Gunnett's been taking advantage of the smaller fields. Now he's got to face more pace pressure, and it'll probably help horses like Lone Sailor and By My Standards, and Gunnett may have a chance to run out of the money here. Who do you like in the New Orleans Classic? Leave a comment below. Remember, share this video with all your horse racing friends, and hit subscribe as we lead you through racing in 2020. It's getting down to the nitty-gritty, but we still got Oaklawn Park and a big card coming up Saturday at the fairgrounds. Don't forget, we've got previews of the Louisiana Derby and the Fairgrounds Oaks. Watch those, hit like, and subscribe as we take a look at the New Orleans Classic. Who's your top pick? Racing from the Fairgrounds.